Okay, so this is the March 31st, 2021 Troy Community Land Bank meeting held via Zoom by executive order uh, due to COVID-19. And I'm gonna turn the meeting over to the chair to call the roll, please. Okay, Heather King, I'm here. Suzanne Spellin. Here. Brian Barker. Here. Jeanette Nicholson. Here. Christina Maribel. Patricia Riley. Here. Andrew Cooper. Here. John Cubitt. Here. John Carmelo. Here. Albert Watson. Here. Okay. So does everybody have a copy? First item on the agenda is a review of the February meeting minutes. Does everybody have a copy of the minutes? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Do we have a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Jeanette Nicholson, second. Heather King, I vote yes. Suzanne Spell? Yes. Brian Barker? Yes. Jeanette Nicholson was a second. Patricia Riley? Yes. Andrew Cooper? Yes. John Cubitt was the motion. John Carmelo? Yes. Albert Watson? Yes. Christina Maribel was absent. Okay. All right. We, we have special guests on the phone uh, for this evening for presentations. Uh, we have Jennifer Lawrence, who is the executive director of the SEAT Center. Um, I saw George Brower as well, and Rebecca from SEAT. And I know that uh, Berta, our community liaison, is also on. And I see you, Irv, there down in my left-hand corner, our, our realtor. Um, Jen, I gave you host, so you should be able to share your screen. Let me know if you can't. Okay, it should be good. Yep. Okay. I've given up all my power. <laughs> so, um, no. <laughs> awesome. so I think I'm just going to share uh, a little bit about Seat Center. Um, I think, you know, we've been, we've had the pleasure to work with you since 2019 um, through our management agreement. And I know George and Rebecca really um, provide a lot of those services on a day-to-day -day basis. So you'll hear from them next, but at Seat Center, you know, our mission is really to provide transformative educational and workforce experiences to create a sense of purpose and hope in our communities while connecting business to real-time solutions. So I look at our partnership with TCLB as exactly that, you know, providing real-time solutions to the community through our partnership at TCLB. Uh, while our main campus is in Schenectady, we do operate the Youth Build program in Troy for CEO and um, Rebecca and our team have um, a satellite office through CEO there. Uh, and we also have a satellite in Albany at the Capitol South campus. Uh, these are, so this is our current, we have two buildings in Schenectady and downtown Schenectady where most of our training um, Oh, there's somebody I think I need to admit to the, here we go. It's Tony. <laughs> Tony, yep. We're back, um, on. back online. Okay. okay. So these are um, two of our facilities. Oh, okay. Whoa, mute, 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 Tony, mute. We're off. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Jen. It's good. It's good. Where we provide training. And a lot of classroom training. We have workshop space there for hands-on tool training. And then of course, the housing sites, the residential housing sites is a huge part of where housing, where training happens. Ha actual in the community at a housing site, um, working on affordable housing projects. Um, a little uh, idea of who we are as far as um, numbers. We have about 23 staff. We're projected to have 28 staff by the end of this year. Um, we served uh, about 200 people last year who walked into our building and we're anticipating about 300 young people between 18 and 24 this year. We really exist in our, our core of our mission is to connect underrepresented young people to meaningful work. We don't want the zip code that you live in to mean that you don't have access to all of the opportunity in the capital region. 
And uh, we see a lot of, you know, the trades, a, lot, a big focus of ours is the trades, but not only the trades, we do have culinary training, tech sector training, and a very successful emergency medical technician training program. But the trades is such a huge part of what we do because we believe that there's something very important about transforming your own life while transforming the community. Uh, and we do that through programs that we administer such as Youth Build, AmeriCorps, and Train Up. And young people leave with credentials like OSHA, their high school diploma, uh, National Center for Construction Education and Research core, uh, core craft credential, which is really the entry level construction credential in the industry. Um, and then really just to talk about, you know, because this is, uh, we were talking to the land bank today, really, again, as I said, it's really important to us that while we're helping young people rebuild their own lives, that they're also rebuilding the community they're in. And there's such a sense of confidence and pride when most of our students never picked up a hammer before, never worked with tools. They're learning how to rebuild themselves, rebuild a house that's in their neighborhood. And um, it really is a, it's something that they look back on for many years to come. So far, we've completed 32 gut and moderate rehabs with young people, including one new build that I have a picture of that George um, worked on with his team. Uh, a lot of people are surprised to know, I think you know this on the call today, but a lot of people are surprised to know that our construction team is in-house uh, and that they're highly skilled for a variety of, of different tasks. And that really our focus on community development is really to serve both a, a job training opportunity, but also as job creation. Um, we hire alumni and we've done this with the TCLB projects. We often can hire alumni, create transitional jobs to help young people move from the program to unsubsidized work. And lastly, this is a picture of the house that George completed. Um, we finished this up right before our TCLB contract on Prospect Street in Schenectady. And this was a new build with students who never worked on a construction site before. Everything from the foundation um, to the finished work. So that is something, George, I know uh, we're very proud of. I just got to visit 54 Fifth Ave the other day. It looks, it's an awesome project. And I am going to turn it over to Rebecca to kind of talk about the partnership, introduce George, and I know we're gonna get right into talking about the uh, next project on River Street. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rebecca Pavla. I'm the Director of Education and Training um, with SEAT Center and have the privilege of um, really working to implement these programs and the pleasure of um, working with incredible staff that um, deliver our program model. Um, George Brower is uh, SEAT's Youth Build Construction Manager, and he has almost 40 years <clears throat> in all phases of residential construction. Um, he's recently become a Lead Green Associate Professional, and in his role at SEAT, he's responsible for project oversight for any of our construction projects in Schenectady and Troy, um, and we hope soon to be Albany. Um, as well as any of our fee-for-service projects. And of course, um, under our contract with TCLB, any requests that Tony makes of him. Um, he serves as our GC um, on our major projects, working with subcontractors, designing the project timeline, and providing the scope of work. And, <clears throat> and then really working with our construction trainers to ensure... <clears throat> the maximum, maximum exposure to all phases of work so that they're able to um, gain that experience and go into that profession if they so choose. Um, so I'm gonna kind of turn it over to George to talk to you a little bit about the River Street Project and answer any of the questions that you might have um, for us around that. So before George starts, I just wanted to remind everyone, um, as we discussed in you know 
board meetings past and also at acquisition and disposition committee about um, entering into a co-development with C to finish the 791 River Street project. So that's where we're, we're dovetailing into that. And, um, you know, George is very familiar, I think at this point with that building and where we need to go from here. George. Thank you. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, 40 years experience, that, that sounds like a lot. I, when I'm turning 60, I like to say I'm turning 20 for the third time. So <laughs> not a handle the 40 thing, but um, yeah. Uh, as Rebecca said, I'm construction manager. I, I, I have been, most of my focus in my career has been in residential construction. I, I have dabbled a little bit with, with a few commercial contractors. Uh, I've, uh, I spent a year doing uh, working for Home Depot as a pro sales manager um, and learned the real uh, retail end. Uh, and that was very educational. I try to seek as much training as I can anywhere I can get it. Um, so I'm also a lead green associate, which is um, proven to be very helpful on the green build and the lead projects that we've been doing. Um, and so having said all that, well, <clears throat> I have spent a great deal of time in the past two weeks uh, reviewing all the work that needs to be done on 791 River. Uh, I've made a few site visits and uh, I feel like I have a great, a, a, a pretty good handle on what definitely needs to be done there and, and some of the other, uh, some of the things that uh, may be optional and, and we have to just discuss and make decisions on. Um, there is a, you know, a lot of subcontractor work uh, that we're going to have to hire out and uh, that can be somewhat of a challenge uh, trying to get subs in that are willing to finish up someone else's project. Uh, so we're, we're going to want to, I'd like to see the really get the ball rolling quick on that with RFPs. Um, there's a lot of work that see in our, our staff, our trainees and our trainers can perform probably, uh, I'm looking at close to $80,000 worth of the work that, uh, is, would fall under general labor or carpentry work, um, rebuilding the back stairs, redoing the floors, uh, moving the hallway, uh, you know, the, all the work that needs to be done to, uh, uh, bring the hallway up the code in the in both the second and the third floor apartments. Um, so you do, there's a lot, lot of lot of the painting and stuff. So there's a lot of work that we can perform there, and we could get going on um, relatively soon. We're we're coming close to wrapping up uh, 54 fifth. Uh, we're we're working on the painting there, and. Uh, just just get it started with the painting when uh, then we just got to put some floors down throw in the kitchens and baths and there's not really a huge scope of work to to be completed there it looks looks like there's a lot maybe when you step in the door but a lot of it's going to roll pretty fast um so you know as soon as we get the heating system in um we're gonna have uh, the plumber in to rough in the bathrooms and and uh We'll be in good shape there and we're ready, ready to uh, look into the 791 River project. So if anyone has any questions that I can answer. Anybody? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next one, Heather, we can either, um, might maybe we want to just let Herb say hello and introduce himself. Herb. Hi, Herb. Hello, everyone. Irvin I should Ackerman. say, I should say Irvin, but I've known Herb so long, I call him Herb, so I apologize. That's, that's fine, Kate. <laughs> and I'm not well, good with names, Irvin, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Irvin Ackerman, uh, the broker at Venture Realty Solutions. Uh, was, company was approved last last month um, as the exclusive broker to sell the Troy Land Bank properties. Um, 
for those that don't know, I worked at uh, the Albany County Land Bank as a real estate broker there for four years. Um, and so this is exciting to get back into neighborhood building. Um, we did take a look at 11 Winnie, which is a project that's under construction um, to get that on the market. So we're doing some market assessments on that as far as pricing. It's a little farther along, um, a lot more work to be done. To, um, tighten it up to make it marketable. But um, we're looking to get together with Tony shortly um, when the schedule clears up to start touring some properties and also look at the new inventory coming in. Okay, thanks. Um, do you, Heather, do you want to do resolutions or do you want to let Roberta? Kind of talk quickly about what she's been working on. Let's. What, why don't we just move forward with Roberta? Okay. Well, then we'll handle all the resolutions if that's okay. Yeah. Then everybody could leave for the boring stuff. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, Berta. Hi, everyone. Hello. Berta. Um. Hi, Tony. Nice uh, to meet you, Berta. <laughs> I know. It's nice to see everyone. Um, so I guess uh, I'll give a brief overview. I wrote things down a little bit this time because I realized I forgot something really exciting when I um, presented for SEAT. And so I don't want to forget. Um, so recently my um, role has been to increase um, and act as a liaison between the land bank and the community. Um, increase the land bank's awareness to other community members within the capital region, um, especially Troy. Um, and by doing so, it's been a weird time with COVID, but um, I've had to tap into uh, many people. Um, it's weird to be a community liaison and not really get to like physically talk to people. Um, so what I've been doing instead is connecting with people online, um, creating our land bank Instagram so that we have a face in many of the social media accounts that people are like depending on to hear information and to connect. Um, so I guess I can share my screen. I have a few things that I've been working on. One is, hey, there's people who don't know what the land bank is. They don't know what Troy Land Bank does. Um, they don't know the services. They don't know anything about the properties or like, that some of the properties can be an option for them. Um, so step one is you, like, hey, just, answering people's questions a, on a who we are. What'd you say? I just made you a host if you wanna share your screen. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Sharing, one moment. So can you guys see my screen? I'm never really sure once I start sharing, it gets weird. Yep, we can. Okay, you can. Yep. All right, awesome. So one thing that I was super um, excited to do was make sure that we had a face in the social world. So we started an Instagram. That's been really awesome um, for engagement. We've had, we've started for, from no followers like almost two months ago. Cool. Um, and have been able to get people to organically follow and be interested in some of the information. Um, I've posted about properties. I post about things that are related to housing and how the land bank exists and why we're here. Um, I do focus on a lot of um, facts or contracting information, like little tips that people can take with them so that if we are low on properties, we're sharing with people more information than just um, properties and projects that we're working on. So I'm hoping that the land bank can be a source of information, all things housing, property, um, fun fact related, uh, so that people can still continue to use us even if our like house bank is low. Um, so that's been cool. I've had a lot of people engage through messaging on um, Instagram, uh, Facebook. They have been like, hey, this is cool. I saw that, how do I get involved? Um, and so I realized that so many people were having so many questions 
and I was spending so much time typing and I'm just trying my best to not get carpal tunnel with my thumbs. So I decided, okay, let's put together a series of information so that people can know from the beginning what we are, what we do, um, services that can help people if they do choose to um, purchase a land bank property, especially the properties that need a little more work. Um, so we have our first day of our series happening tomorrow um, and it kind of goes down and it's a six week series. Every Thursday we have thinking about a land bank property. It's kind of the land bank one-on-one -on -one, letting people know who we are, um, what it means to purchase a property from a land bank um, home buying process with trip. Some people just really want to know about what it's like to purchase a home. And it's not extremely like correlated with land bank properties, unless some of them are completely renovated. Um, usually trip their programs wouldn't cover some of the land bank properties, but at least um, they can be of assistance for people who are interested in purchasing in Troy. Um, then we have vacant building rehab with TAP. So letting people know, okay, now you have this property. What are some steps you need to take to like fix it up? Let's make it a little more realistic. And so that's kind of where someone like TAP would come in. Um, and the biggest issue now that someone wants to purchase a property is like, wait, but I need money. So what are the grants? What are the programs that exist um, so that people can actually see home ownership or purchasing property as more of a reality rather than this like dream state. So we wanna give people like manageable um, resources so they can actually use. Then we have the land bank application process because it's different than purchasing a um, property on the market. People need to know the ins and outs and what's required. Um, and then we have the enforcement process to so that Hopefully, once buildings and properties are sold, they don't end up back with the land bank and um, they turn into useful spaces. So this has been really awesome. I've had some engagement with this. Um, our first event tomorrow, it's not a crazy number, but we have seven people joining. So I'm super excited. Seven people I don't know. So I didn't pay any of my friends to come. But <laughs> to me, that's pretty exciting to have um, people great. who I have never even heard of join on um, some of our conversations. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I also put out our first um, newsletter for the land bank because we have been wanting to have one. So now we actually have one. So that's super exciting. Um, this was for March. The plan is to put one out for every month, letting people know what we're doing, what's happening, um, some of the buildings that are being worked on. Um, Suzanne, I definitely took your uh, story from Facebook, just so you know, and put it in the newsletter. So <laughs> Take whatever um, then, you want. <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> Take it all. <laughs> Yay, okay. But um, just letting people know what rehabs are underway reminding them who we are, what we do, how they can connect with us. Um, and the cool thing about this news uh, letter is that it was sent to all of the people who are related to something that would have to do with um, construction, contractors, electricians, all MWBE certified um, businesses were sent to our newsletter. So this is good for times that we have RFPs that require um, MWBE um, businesses. So that, I'm excited about that, hold on. You're blowing my mind, Roberta. You're blowing my mind, this is great. Yay, Yay. that's good. <laughs> uh, so tomorrow, our first conversation thinking about a land bank property. Um, we put together uh, a few slides so that they can exist on the website after. The plan is to have continuous conversations about things that the land bank offers, also partnerships with TRIP, TAP, other um, community members. We still want to like pull in people who are already doing great things so we don't have to do it because, you know, we just don't have to do everything. Um, so that's awesome. 
Um, this is really cool because now people will be able to go on the website, click on just a topic like I'm thinking I want to purchase a property. And then we don't even really have to answer <laughs> questions for them because all the information will be here for them. So that's awesome. Um, and then let me make sure I don't forget. I don't want to miss anything exciting. We've been working on translation services for um, the website, but also translation services for the application. Um, so far, I think the only one, well, second language that we're going to kind of highlight or um, put to the forefront is Spanish. We did think about Mandarin, but we do have to do a little more research on the demographic of Troy before we choose other languages for the purchase purchase application that is a um, website deliverable website. for the enterprise grant so we're really trying to make sure we get that done um, a oh, cool thing that happened I reached out to home headquarters we Tony and I we have our first meeting with them tomorrow um, the Albany County Land Bank uses home headquarters to finance some of their land bank properties and this is really, really, really cool because there's not many finance programs that finance rehabs. And so this is like, like an actual game changer um, if we can make this connection when we get people to come to us and then they don't have a capital solution or a financial solution. Um, so we're really hoping to partner with them. They were excited at the possibility to work with us. So we'll have more on that after tomorrow's meeting. Um, but this is all really awesome stuff. Basically we're sharing, letting people know what exists, um, helping people with resources that are already out there so that they can purchase properties. Cause I just want it to be, um, I just want home ownership to be more accessible for black, brown immigrant people and Hopefully some of the work that we're doing and some of the information that we're providing can do so. And that's it. Just great. Yeah, Yay. go Berta. Berta, hey. I echo what Kate said, my mind is blown. I was showing Tony how your Facebook post on the series reached 1,112 people. Yay. So yes, yeah, so it was, that's what I was dropping my phone about. Single <laughs> digits. Yes. So, and I'm seeing all the, you know, the, you're building a, a presence and it's, and it's compounding online. So just your posts have been amazing and, and just thank you for, thank you. Yeah, Yay. great Thanks. stuff. Yeah. I, you know, I just wanted to really say, um, Jennifer, to every, everybody at C, thank God for you guys. <laughs> um, I mean, you guys have been such a, a huge help, uh, you know, when we first started partnering up in late 2019, it was just when the city's disposition list came out and it was a mad scramble. But if you guys hadn't been there, you know, we wouldn't have been able to roll that into a grant application for um, enterprise funding round 4.2. We wouldn't have gotten that $400,000. Berta wouldn't be there doing all this great stuff. We wouldn't be able to, you know, purchase the properties to de-densify Fallon apartments. And that all goes back to the partnership that started in September 2019. So um, it's, I, I can't tell you how grateful I am. The Thank land you. bank is growing up <laughs> and yeah. out. And, yeah. out. and uh, Herb, we're excited to see what you can yeah. do in George and everybody. So we're, this has been a long time coming. So really thank you. Working with the land bank. I, I, it's been a great experience so far. You hear that, Tony? Yeah, no, it's been great with <laughs> every, everyone. Everyone's been great. And I have to say, Kamali has been, she's not here, but Kamali has had my back. So <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. I mean, you're more than welcome to, to all of our presenters. You're more than welcome to stay on for the boring stuff, but <laughs> we wouldn't fault you if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate being able to present and um, it's been a really, I agree, Tony, it's been a really great to see the partnership and to see things, to see things get to this point. So thank you, everyone. Can you feel better now? Thank you. You want to stay <laughs> as our director for a while? <laughs> okay. Um, 
it definitely helps. It was nice meeting you, uh, even via Zoom. <laughs> Someday all of us will Someday be Someday in person, person, hopefully. Okay, I am going to move forward to the next item on the agenda. We have a resolution to award a heating and plumbing contract for 54 Fifth Avenue to G the Jeter Group. Do I have a motion to put it on the table for discussion? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. <laughs> All right. Do uh, Tony, you want to just give us a quick overview of this? Uh, yeah, we, we had two responses to the RP that I um, uh, put out. Um, the other response was from Roland J. Downs, and I believe their bid was 22,000 or 23,000. Or um, something else, thousands. There was like. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it was about that. I don't remember the exact the exact figure. Um, it's, I believe it's part of the what I circulated, though. Um, the Jeter Group um, submitted a bid of eighteen thousand um, dollars, and there was a little bit of difference between the two. Um, Roland J. Downs um, offered an alternative, and it was still at a higher, high, substantially higher price than Jeter. Um, Jeter, as part of his proposal, which was not part of the RFP, um, he's also going to not only install the baseball radiation, but the work that he damages to get that done, he's going to um, basically repair. So it's a finished product. Um, I did mention that seat is available to do that. And um, he said that he, he, he kind of wanted to do that work too. Uh, I think he feels like he has to uh, show the land bank how he can do finished work. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> I know. Okay, are there any questions? Yeah, oh, somebody gonna, uh, uh, Tony, for the for the kitchen installation of the baseboard heat, um, does he have some uh, kitchen design plans to follow? So that it won't be an issue of where the hell to place the refrigerator? <laughs> We, I think we lost him. He's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? Hang we, up? we know the refrigerator though could be a could be an issue. <laughs> well, we certainly know that. <sighs> I'll see if he I, I tries gonna, to get back try in. To rejoin. <laughs> Oops. I don't see him yet, but uh, <laughs> as soon scared. as he does, uh, I will let him in. I guess the question was too scary. Yes. We lost Heather as well. Because <laughs> they're together. Oh, yikes. So does anyone have a sense? I don't know if, if this is, so it's the lowest bit of the two. Is it, a, is it, does it seem realistic? Like, or fair to anyone's judgment? Price looks fine to me. You know, if you're, talking about two separate heating units it's about right and this is install only or this is all the equipment and installation everything everything yeah okay yeah for yeah two boilers and common i mean he, and he came in a few like i don't know within 2000 i think of the commercial like um, family dance was higher, obviously, and right. I forget who the other bid was off the top of my head, but um, it was, you know, apples to apples comparison. And since he's not like a big company, you know, that jacks up the prices, I think he was able to come in lower because he's doing it himself, you know. Right. Wow, they're still not back. <laughs> it, it seemed like did they get on did the did, did uh massive mesh come back up does I anybody know were, i think they were on somebody's phone yeah oh heather's uh, like we're coming back don't worry <laughs> we got <laughs> dropped all right gotta love Gotta love online meetings. Well, if you want to hear a horror story, 
Um, <laughs> I do visual uh, virtual tours for an organization in the city. And one of their tour guides uh, was on Zoom doing his presentation and he didn't know it, but his internet dropped him. He continued and did the whole presentation. And meanwhile, everyone was trying to get in touch with him, but because when the screen is on Zoom and he was doing his slides, he, he didn't know that people were emailing him and he had turned his phone off. So, <laughs> The whole thing was just gone. <laughs> okay. Yikes. We, uh, I mean, we do this every day, all day, every day. We always have two people on because everybody's working from home and we're doing online training and we always have, you got to have two people, two people, two locations. It's the only way to, because <laughs> that right. happens, right? Like people drop you, like. All right. They're coming back. So we shouldn't talk bad about them. <laughs> Like, Do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can hear before you can we can see them <laughs> yeah you're sideways but hey <laughs> hey you know what don't mess with it if it's working <laughs> ah, there you go Did you miss <laughs> uh, well, all right nice so she, i think jeanette was drilling tony about the refrigerator <laughs> <laughs> Not is there really, a, just yeah, is, I want to make sure that we don't have the same Is there a detail plan, that we right? did that, um, the one that he, uh, the kitchen at 33, whatever the hell the address is. <laughs> 3036. Oh. So at 54, this is for heating and um, plumbing at uh, 54 Fifth Avenue. And he's not, he's not going to be doing uh, any kitchen work per se. He's baseboard putting in heat, Tony. Baseboard heat. That's the problem. Well, oh. if he puts it across a doorway, it's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Sorry to be such a pain in the butt, no. but it's, no, it's sort I, of critical. I, yeah, no, I, Jeanette, I believe I understand where, where you're coming from. Um, so the, the RFP to tankless boilers to be installed um, and the radiation, you know, baseboard radiation uh, to be circulated from that. Um, two electric uh, water heaters um, and uh, washer dryer hookups uh, in the basement for uh, both units. So that's, that's really the, um, what he proposed to do was what he rips up to get the baseboard radiation and he will also repair, um, which was not part of the RFP, um, which I probably should have done, but um, again, seats, seats in there so they, they could do the work, but he he's not wanting to do that. And he has a layout and a plan to follow as to where everything's gonna be? Um, he wasn't given one. But I mean, is there one? I mean, right. is he accountable to a plan? <laughs> right. That's that's I think the right Jeanette. That's the question. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we can't let this guy just be willy nilly in the freaking kitchen. <laughs> Jeanette, this this is seats project, so that that will so C can continue, so that he who will be working with them on this. The the boilers are Navion boilers, and um, he did provide a certificate um, of training of level two, I believe. So uh, he definitely has the capability to install the units. Um, you know, I could ask Russ Reeves to double check, to have a conversation with him to double check to make sure if there's any engineering issues, they you know, get addressed before the installation. Well, Tony, how about you just check with seat to make sure that there's a kitchen design that this fellow is aware of so that, you know, it doesn't become an issue. Well, we could do that. Um, I, okay, I, I'll, I'll, I'm not a, not a problem, Jeanette, I'll, I'll do well, that. Well, I don't, I mean, I would just hate to wind up in another, you know, situation where something so simple uh, could be solved just by following, you know, a, a, a plan for where things go. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, and there, I mean, I would just say my experience is that if in the absence of a plan, people often will do what's easiest to do, but that yeah. doesn't, that doesn't always, you know, like where are you going to hang those boiler units? Well, we'll put them right here on this wall because look, the gas line's right there. Well, yeah, maybe that's where you want them, but maybe it's better if they're over on the other side of the basement. <laughs> like that kind of thing. You know, that's that. I think that's what sort of Jeanette's saying. And specifically the kitchen. <laughs> right. Because <Well, laughs> of the yeah. baseboard. <laughs> The RFP did specify that the location will be the locations of the boilers, the water heaters, and the washer dryer hookups will be um, deter determined by seat. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see where the base for ends up. Good. I still have a picture in my head. Radiator, radiator going across the door. Doorway. <laughs> Although they're going to move that door. <laughs> Oh. I have no other questions myself. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, so we need a motion to approve that contract, right, with Jeter? Uh, it's going to be Jeanette, right? I don't think so. <laughs> I'll motion. All right. I'll motion to approve. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Heather King, I vote yes. Suzanne Spellen? Yes. Brian Barker? Yes. Jeanette Nicholson? Can I abstain? Yes. Okay. Christina Maribel? Patricia Riley? Yes. Andrew Cooper? Yes. John Cubitt? Yes. John Carmelo? Yes. Albert Watson? Uh, I think I'll abstain. I don't, I don't really know anything about the project, so. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Uh, next, we have in front of us a resolution to award a property maintenance contract. So this, uh, this is the work that trip has been doing for the land bank since day one. Um, because of the value of the contract on an annual basis, um, Kate suggested that we uh, uh, release an RFP. So uh, we, just, we, should, we should have probably done that a year or two ago um, and maybe on an uh, annual basis. But the bottom line is we had uh, two responses to the RFP. One was uh, both in construction um, and the other was TRIP. And uh, this was kind of an apples and oranges response. The RFP asked um, the respondents to provide, uh, you know, basically a summary of the titles of the folks who will be doing property maintenance work, what the hourly rate were, uh, we didn't specify them in the RFP because that's kind of hard to do with an organization that's already, you know, got their staff in place. So uh, we didn't want to tell them what staff they needed. It's really, what staff do you have to get this stuff done? Um, so the staffing lineup between TRIP and Bolton Construction, I'm sorry, it wasn't Bolton Construction, it was uh, Priam. Bolton is a subsidiary or vice versa. So to confuse you less, I'll just keep talking. Um, so the bottom line is the, the hourly rates that TRIP proposed were slightly lower than the hourly rates overall that uh, Ilium, it wasn't pretty, Ilium proposed. What's the matter? Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, there you go. We're still here. So, does anyone have any questions or is there a... Zoom issue. I, I think I didn't think we knew you were finished. It seemed like you cut off, and we thought you you, oh, you nope. froze or something. But is I think if that's all there is to say, can we make yeah. a motion to approve. We did not. Do we have a motion? Yes, I'll make one. We have a second. Second. Okay, Heather King, I vote yes. Suzanne Spellen, yes. Brian Barker was our second. Jeanette Nicholson was our motion. Christina Maribel is absent. Patricia Riley? Yes. Andrew Cooper? Yes. John Cubitt? Yes. John Carmelo? Yes. Albert Watson? Um, I abstain from this. I'm on a trip to board, so. Okay, good call. All right, next we have in front of us a resolution for 
Executive Director of Compensation. I'm going to let you guys. You're going to, you're going to, what? Just, well, yeah, just I don't want to influence anybody. <laughs> he doesn't want to influence anybody. Sure. Setting the door on me. So, I'm going to make a motion to put this on the table. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. So, thank you for everybody who submitted your feedback. It was greatly appreciated. The majority was exceeded expectations of Tony's performance with some meets expectations and really have no complaints. Um, Tony has been working for us and I would say he probably puts in 60 to 70 hours a week at a minimum. We know he works weekends and he's essentially overworked. So his initial request for a salary increase, which is in line with his position was a 10 to $20,000 request. So it was the recommendation that the $10,000 increase be improved. And this is due. we did have the finance uh, committee review the budget to make sure that we could, we could um, afford it. And then also with the recommendation that for the next years of like a, a staggered, like another five-year increase next year, and then another five-year increase the year after. You mean 5,000? Yeah. That's what I meant. It's late. Okay. <laughs> Five year increase. He's gonna he's gonna croak if he hears he's he needs another 10 years. <laughs> the the only question I had, and I Tony had asked me and I told him I would find out because I wasn't sure. Um, are you approving ten thousand as of let's say April 1st to April 1st next year, or are you approving a $10,000 raise from April 1st to December 31st, 2021? An annual increase, so of $10,000 from April 1st to April 1st of next year. Okay. Yeah. Just Yeah, since he probably does his own payroll, you just might mention that to him. <laughs> you know. Wait, what, where are those internal controls? <laughs> Right. Well, Heather signs off on it. Yeah. Or the treasure, you know. Yeah. No, I know, I know. Yeah. It just was funny. He said, well, he does his own payroll. <laughs> well, you know. But he does, I mean, yes, that's true, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I have a question. Um, do you know if by any chance the finance committee or the hiring committee thought about perhaps um, hiring part-time staff with some available funds? Uh, what available funds, Jeanette? Well, I don't know. I mean, a $10,000 raise is a considerable chunk of change uh, considering um, it's well above uh, any normal percentage. So I'm, I'm just curious. I'm... Um, it, as far as an executive director compensation package, the, you look at it when you break it down, $10,000 over the course of 12 months of a salary increase for what the role that he performs here, it's, I find that it's very much in line with other, his peers. So well, it's not according to, um, you know, record, um, like human resources, uh, salary reviews, but I don't want to dispute that. I'm just wondering if any consideration was given to hiring additional staff with any funds that might've been available. Is my question, and if no, then it's no. But you know, just the question. Well, we've always been wanting to hire additional staff. That's always been on on the just that's the wish list. With seat coming on board, we essentially have hired additional staff. They're performing those additional tasks for us. I okay. will tell you that um, you know, you know, I'm familiar with other land banks. And the numbers are public, you know, on their websites. But um, the average salary for an executive director of a land bank is probably around a hundred thousand. I know some that are higher than that, um, between a hundred and a hundred and fifteen. And there's probably, you know, the bottom end of that is around ninety-five. Um, so just to give you an idea of, you know apples to apples, land bank to land bank. And of course, all those other people do have tons of staff. Right. So, um, I, I just uh, view the land bank as uh, um, somewhat um, 
not being able to realize its potential because it is uh, lacking in uh, additional human resources is, is, is all I was, the point I was making. And well, the only way to get additional resource, human resources is to allocate funds toward that. So um, I if think the finance definitely... committee or you know, hiring committee didn't consider that as an option, that's fine. Um, you know, I, I'll accept that. And um, I think you should, I think you could sit down though. That could be an agenda item because I know that there's been discussion in other committee meetings about additional consulting services from the real estate group, you know, to help us. Sure. Um, I mean, yeah, it's just, it's crazy the way yeah. things. Anyway. So I think you're right. I, I, I don't think your, your point should be swept under the rug. I think you should have a finance and, and hiring committee, you know, just to talk about it and plan if, if that's what, you know, the board wants to do. So I think it's important what you said. And it's always been an important issue that we had, but the issue at hand was Tony has been working without a salary increase. And it's common and typical in the industry to, you know, you do the performance review, he requested a salary increase. So, and it is the recommendation that we award him that. And it was not at the high end of, it was at the minimum of what he requested. And it was in line with the low range of what other land banks are currently paying their executive directors. So your point is, of course, always valid. We have always known we needed additional staff, but that was not, the issue is not hiring additional staff. The, the item on the agenda was the reviewing what his salary requirements were. Fine. Okay. Yep. So that is definitely something that, that we should discuss. And Further down, we're going to, you'll see that we're going to have a, an announcement about a board retreat. So these are all things that we need further conversation on. So it was, we did request that the finance committee review the request and it was recommended to move forward. Fine. Okay. I have a, a, another question. Uh, does the, are there any other expenses associated with this increase? I forget exactly how Tony's compensation works, but is there any other relative increase to other benefits that is? He's like, current. Does, like retirement he, contributions that would reflect an increase in salary or anything like that. I just, just curious if that's the sum total of any uh, costs that we're approving. It is just a $10,000 annual salary increase. His current benefits are healthcare. Kate, is there anything that I'm missing besides that? I don't believe there's a four. Okay. No, no, it's just healthcare, so. I just didn't remember what, what, what else there might be in the package. Oh, Thanks. it's good to revisit it. He's been with us for quite a few years now. So it's always, and it was you and, um, it's, it's been a few years we've reviewed what yeah. his package is. Okay. I got Do a we question. Have... Uh, what would that put his salary at? That bumps him up to ninety-five. Okay. Right. Plus, plus healthcare. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve? Motion. Do we have a second? Pat Riley. Okay. Heather King, I vote yes. Suzanne Spellin. Yes. Brian Barker? Yes. Jeanette Nicholson? Yes. Christina Maribel is absent. Pat Riley made a motion. Andrew Cooper? Yes. John yes. Made a motion. John Carmelo? <laughs> I don't know if that's my computer, but you sound funny. Uh, yes. I think she froze. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that motion carried. Um, <laughs> let me text her and tell her she's frozen. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
She'll be back. There she is. That was great. <laughs> you're, you're like Houdini. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it, I just, I called it on mine this time. I don't know what's going on with Tony's phone. That's okay. So, so okay. you get John Carmelo voted. Yes. And I think that was the end of your roll call. If I... Well, no, I have Albert okay. Watson. All right. Uh, yes. So we have all in favor. Okay. I am going to get um, Tony back in here because he needs to explain this next resolution that we have on the agenda, which is to authorize the Ameristar loan for 11 Winnie Avenue. So hold on. Let me go grab him. Did you run away? No, you're always starting to jump out the window though. Okay. Your phone dropped me. So I had to call in on, um, yeah. And it looks like Albert's frozen. Oh, I nope, you got him there. Okay, there we go. All right, so we have um, the resolution of authorizing the Ameristar loan 11 Winnie Avenue. Oh, by the way, the last resolution was approved. Okay, did you get it? Well, thank you, by the way. Um, uh, who motion did we second this? I got it. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. So the um, uh, the need first the deed for the the loan uh, comes down to this uh, mostly. Uh, usually, when I submit my quarterly report to Enterprise Community, the disbursement I get is for expenses from the quarter I'm reporting for, and for projected expenses for the for the the new quarter, the next quarter. Um, because I mentioned to Tanya that we were having a cash flow issue and I would like to get uh, disbursement as soon as possible, instead of helping, she said, I'm not going to give you any projected um, funds in this disbursement other than what you have invoices in hand for. So that left us, uh, I mean, we've, with the, all the projects we have going on, um, you know, cash flow has been a bumpy road. Um, since the projects have started and as they've gotten deeper and deeper. So the lack of a disbursement of what it should be has put us in this position. Um, usually it takes about a month to finish the quarterly report. And then it takes about a month for enterprise to actually get a disbursement into our bank accounts. So we're down on our bank balance to uh, $9,000. And I've got invoices for uh, 11 Winnie Avenue uh, that amount to about $20,000. So the loan is uh, simply needed quickly so that we can pay bills for the projects and um, for the period of time that we're going to be waiting for the enterprise to issue the next disbursement. Um, what will help with the cash flow is when 11 Winnie Avenue is completed and it's on the market, the value should be about $170,000. Um, and then soon after that, 54 Fifth Avenue should be completed. And that also is valued at about $170,000. So um, between those two sales and the disbursements that we should be getting from enterprise community, our cash flow situation should should improve, but right now it's um, we're at a point where we really can't quite pay our bills. And April first is tomorrow when the new bills start coming in. So essentially, what Tony is proposing is taking out a mortgage on Equ eleven Winnie equity loan, an equity loan. Yeah. And I believe the terms are attached. Uh, a term sheet went out and it's attached to the resolution. Do we have any questions? I didn't get that resolution. Uh, it's, and it's not on the agenda I'm looking at. I know there are several versions floating around. It's possible I didn't get the final one in prep. 
Kate, we don't have access to the internet. Are you able to forward that to Andrew or do you want to go over what the terms are in a snapshot? Yeah. And I'm let me, going to, before everybody passes out, I'm going to um, let you know that this is equivalent to essentially hard money in yeah. what you would, it's, the rate is high, but Kate can explain it to you. Thank you everybody for pitching in. We're still down here. We apologize. Yeah. You have how many emails? So the I'm assuming the goal is with this loan that, that we would pay it off in full as soon as we sell the property. So as it would only be carried done. for a short term. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So even though the interest but, is yes, so the the rate might be high, but it, that doesn't amount to a high cost. Precisely. Okay. Do we have any? Do we have any quest, other questions on it? Is this secured? I'm working on. I'm working on the terms. Hold on one sec. Okay. okay. Um, do you have a term? Yeah, Tony? Tony's got the term sheet that he can just give a. So what does the monthly payment work out to be, Tony? Um, I don't think that's the top, uh, part of the term sheet, actually. No, it's not. They no. just, you don't have a... Um, let's see. That's the resolution. Okay. Oh, oh the I'm monthly sorry. payment is $950 a month, interest only. So at the time that the property closes, um, we also are paying $2,600 in points, $950 interest only payment, and then payment of none of that goes towards the balance. And at the time 11 winning closes, we pay we pay off the mortgage of $80,000. Okay, and when did they say they can have the closing? Uh, they said they would put a rush on it, but they, they didn't commit to a date. Okay, but it's an, it's would accomplish the goals. Uh, yeah, one of the, you know, um, Time is of essence, obviously, because bills are going to be coming in. And um, that's one of the reasons why I started looking at this product, because it's, I'll, it's, it's quicker to access cash than, you know, the traditional route. So um, that's a I, lot of money, though. Yeah. For, <laughs> that's a lot of money for $80,000. You're paying yes. 950 a month in interest, and then on top of that, you're paying 2600. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, it is. But so, Albert, you could call Tanya at Enterprise and let her know. <laughs> like <it's> funding. <laughs> well, I mean, somebody said that it's not a lot of money. That's a lot of money for eighty thousand dollars for twelve months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Is there a prepayment penalty if we pay it off? sooner i think he said he would waive that because there normally would be i think okay i think i recall that as well yeah okay so there's no there's no prepayment penalty no he said he would waive that in his communications with us and do you have to pay filing fees for the uh it's, it's a secured loan right Right. It looks like we're paying their council's fees and probably all the recording fees, I would bet. Okay, go down a little bit. Do you have to pay title insurance or do you have to do a title search or anything? I don't believe so. Oh, no, wait a minute. Provide a copy of the existing building permit and building plans, title insurance commitment from national insurer with acceptable exceptions. Don't we already have title on that? Yeah. But they mean to them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They, they're going to need their own. Uh... Right. Yeah, I mean, your closing costs, you know, uh, let's see, title insurance commitment. So you're probably going to pay 1200 bucks for title insurance, 800 for the attorney, plus all recording fees. You're probably into another 2500 Okay. So then on top of the $2,600 points, so we're essentially getting $75,000. And how much is it that you needed for but, the- But Heather, they're not gonna fund that out of the- 
Right. I, mean, no, I, I suppose they could, but you know, it's, I, I guess they could fund it all out of proceeds. So how much did you need? We'll have to see. Well, I, what I said I, I needed was at least $80,000 based on what, what the situation right. seemed to be like right now. Okay. So it's going to cost us about five grand to get some to get to get the eighty. Oh. Yeah. That's okay. Tony, this is uh, Brian. H have you talked to the community loan fund about possibilities? You know, Brian, for um, Sharon Nichols and I went to uh, went to uh, community loan fund a couple of years ago, uh, and we also went to Pioneer, and we also went to Boston Spa National, and. I mean, they just, the, first of all, the community loan fund, I was, neither Sharon nor I could understand um, if they really understood what we were asking for. Um, it was really kind of bizarre. I mean, I know there's a lot of good things I hear about community loan fund, but when we were there, um, it just didn't click. I mean, it just did not click. Um, and with, uh, with Pioneer and um, Boston Spa National, um, one of them wanted us to take out a five-year CD. It was weird. It was Boston Spa. We'd be borrowing yeah, our own like, money. And, yeah. take, and, and so that didn't make any sense. And I think Pioneer just turned, turned us down outright. So, oh, really? Um, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I, I believe they did. I, I'm going to have to go back to be absolutely sure. Um, you know, Albert, I take that back. They didn't. I don't think they turned us down completely. I think they approved us in a way that we wouldn't we wouldn't want oh, was it, wouldn't want to take the loan. They had you jumping through hoops. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the terms are the terms aren't ideal. The situation is not ideal. But it's um, a short term solution. Do we have any other questions? Because I believe that John needs to leave. What's the anticipated payback term? It's, uh, what was it? $80,000. I mean, uh, time, time nine, frame. Nine, 950 per month. No, when do you anticipate? When 11 Winnie sells? Uh, well, the last piece of 11 Winnie, this goes back to waiting for an engineer. Russ Reeves and Johnny Bobo are going to meet tomorrow at 10 o'clock to go over the last piece of uh, design work that Reeves needs to submit to the city to get the green light to do stabilization on the back foundation wall so that the back two decks can be built and the project should, the project should be done at that point. Oh, so we're close. Yeah, we're, we're close. I mean, so would you say six months is an isn't a long well, timeline? If, it, if it's six months, I will be jumping out that window. <laughs> it's it's the reason I, I chose eleven winnie is it's it's close to being completed, and um, it'll be the first one completed. I've asked Johnny Bobo to um, not not work much at thirty two twenty nine Sixth Avenue because of, I you know because of the cash flow issue, and to uh, otherwise invest his time in 11 Winnie so that can get done as quickly as possible. So. The other thing I guess I would just point out is um, the 950 interest only, if that went out 12 months, that's gonna be $11,400. And then you'd still owe the entire principal of 80,000. Mm -hmm. And if the closing cost came out of that, you know, that would be an addition. Plus yeah. 2,600 and points. Um, no, it's going to be 12. There's no way this is going to be 12. It's not going to be six months. It's not even, it shouldn't be, it really should not be two months. Okay. Will you have, will you have any issues paying the interest and, and the, the closing costs? Can you cover the interest payments and the closing costs? Yes. Yeah. No, he says you have issue paying it or you don't. No, have no, I, we can pay. We can pay those costs. 
Okay. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Okay. Who was that? Who was that? John Cuban. Right. I'll make the second. I vote yes. Suzanne Spellin. Yes. Brian Barker. Yes. Jeanette Nicholson. Yes. Christine Maribel is absent. Patricia Riley. Yes. Andrew Cooper. Yes. John Cubitt made the motion. John Carmelo. He left. Oh, he left. Okay. Albert Watson. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you got to get uh, it done. So. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. We appreciate the. Um, it's it's not sit it's not sitting comfortably. It's it's just to let everybody yeah. know. Yeah. But it's I mean, a that's... solution. So that was the last of the resolutions on the agenda. I did want to make an announcement that we will be holding a Troy Community Land Bank board retreat. Uh, the date will be May 22nd. That is a Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. We'll be hosting that at the Troy Community, um, the Troy Country Club. Uh, there will be breakfast and a light breakfast and also lunch served. So, Kate will be doing a presentation. And Kate, what are some of the topics that you'll be covering? Well, the uh, one of the questions on your Paris report that you'll see next month is if you've taken your ongoing training. So I'll be presenting um, on the public authorities law and the fiduciary duties of board members. And for many of you, because you're new, this will be really good um, to understand how the land bank works and also what your legal uh, requirements are as board members. What are the hours again, Kate? Oh, sorry, uh, Heather. No, that's okay. Um, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay. And did you say May 21st? May 22nd. It 22nd. is a Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. Okay. We understand. That's why I'm trying to, um, we understand it's, it's a Saturday. So we're trying to make it as pleasant as possible. <laughs> Might be nice to be together again. Yeah, it's going to be nice to see everybody again. And they, um, the, the uh, country club was, is familiar with how to, to set up for these types of events, and the room is big enough too to allow us for plenty of spacing, and it will be in compliance with any COVID protocol. Great. Which we, by the way, we had intended to let everyone know that we have both been vaccinated, fully vaccinated, and. Uh, so that's why we're not wearing masks yeah. and we're in proximity to each other. Got my first shot Friday. Good for you. Ah, congratulations. Congratulations. So um, I have so I have both of my Bill Gates shots. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I I'm waiting for my overlord to give me my instructions. <laughs> yeah. They'll be beaming in any moment. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Either that or superpowers. I, I want superpowers. <laughs> I think you already have some. Oh, thanks. <laughs> After my second vaccine, none of my Apple products seem to work. <laughs> like <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> so I hope everybody can meet it. Do we see any conflicts with regards to the annual, the, um, the board retreat? Nope. Okay. Okay for me. All right, wonderful. I pre I really do appreciate everybody's time with that. So, Kate, do we really need to go over the committee reports because we pretty much addressed everything? You know, the the executive committee met just to present the agenda. The A and A and D committee, Brian. Um, we went over the the heating and plumbing and the property maintenance contract. The finance committee, John, you're keep it. You're here. You went over the financials. Are there any other reports? No, I would just say, you know, next month we'll be looking at the Paris report to approve it. Um, we're going to probably file it anyway on time and, you know, we'll, we'll present it to you just so you know what's in it. But we had to wait for those audited financials. And so Tony and I were scrambling today, you know, to get it so that it's close to on time. Um, Internet yet or no? Uh, yeah, we have it back. I'm going to log in if Tony, if I just need to go in and certify it at this point, correct? 
Um, that's if Tony's ready for you to do it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do that this evening and then will this be a record? Yeah. And, you know, we'll talk about it at the next meeting. And then I'll also have probably a co-development agreement for 791 River with C for you to okay. take a look at by then. Um, but that'll go to A and D, you know, in April 1st, I'm sure, you know, okay. um, but that's kind of the highlights for next month. There's really nothing unless there's, you know, property stuff going on. There's there not will much. be property stuff going on. They are releasing the they are releasing the NREM list for the oh, city. Okay. So hopefully we will have some property stuff popping up here shortly. Yeah, because you'll want yeah. a resolution to acquire those at ASAP. Yeah. I mean, even yeah. if you had to move your meeting back to a week, you know, if you needed to, that would be fine too. So, so I think at this point we're looking at April 21st for a board meeting or April 28th. Right. The 21st is your normal. Right. All right. We will notify everybody probably next week of whether it'll be the 21st or the 28th. We have a meeting with Steve Strikeman on Friday, so we might have a better feel for when that list will actually be publicly released. Right. And when the applications are due by. Yeah. So okay. the planning okay. commission is the 21st. All right. So can we schedule it for the, well, hopefully we can schedule it. Well, we'd be doing it in the morning, right? Yeah. Oh, that's true. I forgot. Yeah. Okay. No, that's okay. It's it was a long meeting. I thank everybody for taking the time. And um, if there's nothing else to discuss, thank you again for all doing for all of you for doing what you do. This is volunteer, so yeah. we do appreciate it. Except for you, Kate, and you, Tony. Um, we do appreciate you. So, and also thank you for having the presenters. It was nice to speak with our partners tonight and see them. So thanks for arranging that as well. All, All right. right, you need Thank a you. motion to adjourn. I'm gonna make a motion to adjourn. I make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> All right. Good night. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Good night.